Hey guys, Coach Kuiper here with another installment of Kuiper's Coaching Concepts. Uh, we're in the back porch, back patio edition uh, during this coronavirus stay at home time, so it shouldn't stop us from getting better. And uh, wanted to bring to you some information, tips, tricks, maybe a couple drills here talking about wrist activation, proper rotation of a baseball for us pitchers. Um, and it doesn't have to be all pitchers, it can also be other throwers too. Uh, this is probably geared a little bit more for the younger kids, but again, a lot of this stuff, even though I say it might be geared for the younger kids, it absolutely can apply to older kids too that, that may have either a need for reminding or just introduction of some drills to help uh, emphasize skill. Now, uh, in this day and age, we are faced with a lot of metrics and lingo. Uh, spin rate is one of them. You might hear about launch angle for the hitters, but pitchers, you'll talk about exit, uh, excuse me, you'll talk about um, spin rate and one of the things that we're going to talk about today is activating the wrist. Uh, one of the easiest and best things I can suggest is just taking a look at the rotation of a four seam fastball and for those of the, you who maybe aren't even familiar with a four seam uh, we're talking about across the seams okay uh, two seam is with the seams four seam being across. Um, when you release the baseball, what I see, especially with a lot of guys, is uh, is they don't activate the wrist at the very end. So I consider your entire body a set of levers and uh, uh, joints that should act in sequence in order to maximize the translation of energy from the lower through the midsection and out uh, into the ball at the very end. And so if we think about it, we can we want to get that last lever, lever being wrist and even your fingers. Um, so if we go these, these last levers, you know, you go core, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and at the very end, we were going to want to activate that wrist right at the end. So what you'll see a lot of guys do when they warm up is they might do some of these wrist flips. They might take a, uh, a glove, and I've seen, I was taught a few different ways. You can either put the glove underneath the wrist and isolate the wrist. You can put the glove underneath the elbow and do the, the elbow and wrist. Um, when you're getting your elbow up at about uh, shoulder height, you can exaggerate this. And then once you get there, you're gonna work it back. One of the big things that I see is that, great, people can do this drill, and maybe they even struggle with it, and that's where we're gonna start today, but then they don't translate it into the rest of their throat. Gotta remember that these drills serve a purpose. It's not just warming up our wrist and getting the muscles warm. Uh, it's it's even more than that, and it's getting uh, a reminder of mechanics to follow suit. So um, let's just go ahead and, and talk about a couple drills. One of the most basic ones that I like to do, and I used to do this just not even knowing it was a drill when I was a kid, is I'd lay in bed thinking about dreaming about baseball, and I'd just toss the ball up to myself. I'd be on the sofa or in bed. Uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like right uh, real real quick right here if we just lay on the ground this is something that we can do now just lay on the ground and i'll turn sideways hopefully you can see it and we're just going to toss the ball up don't even need a glove can just barehand it and i'm going to work on spinning the baseball and ideally i should be able to start looking and seeing how much spin am i getting am i getting it to rotate just a couple times because i'm pushing it at the end with a stiff wrist or am I nice and loose and really getting a lot of spin behind it? All right, so there's the first one. Now, some kids, uh, maybe they don't wanna, if they're still real young and they don't wanna, can, they don't wanna trust themselves to catch a baseball that's coming right down with the force of gravity onto their face, uh, it's okay to use a tennis ball, absolutely okay. You can see the rotation, you can feel it. Uh, and one of the things that I like to talk about when you do uh, some of these drills is think about your arm being extremely loose. You can say a wet noodle, uh, a towel, um, whatever, whatever uh, is that a metaphor that you want just needs to be super nice and loose so that you're letting this whip through. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about the pronation or what's happening at the very end but for, for right now. But uh, something else that you can do, some of you all have seen this before, you can draw a line around a baseball. I've seen people use a piece of electrical tape like is right here. And you can do this exact same drill. Lay down, toss it up. Uh, this is one that's really good for feedback. And uh, we'll use this sometimes with guys who have a trouble with, uh, with, with the game coming around a baseball. Uh, but I will say, throwing a, a ball and getting this line can be really challenging for some. And it's, it's not one 
Um, uh, just be careful when you're doing it that people don't get too discouraged because it can be extremely difficult for some and it can be real easy for others but uh, it's, a, it's one that I like to try and, and like, uh, like to have guys at least experiment with and see if it's a drill that works for them. All right, so we talked about uh, spin drill that way. Something else, uh, what's next? I'm not gonna go through the full sequence of the towel drill, but here's another one that you can do to emphasize uh, wrist action out front. For those of you who have never seen a towel drill, take just a normal dish towel. Uh, I just go to the dollar store, pick up one of those, fold it in half lengthwise again. So you've got it this way. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and then uh, pretend like you're gonna hold those two fingers out and go ahead and you can put, put that uh, towel, which is going to simulate the baseball, give you a little weight and feedback uh, as you're doing it. So you get that, that towel is going to be behind you, basically. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a pitching motion. Now, emphasizing, you can do this on various parts of the checkpoint to work on certain things that you want to, but since today we're talking about activation out front and, and spin rate, wrist flip, all that. So we're going to go ahead and get to our release point. Okay, I'm just going to get there. Release point, remember all the checkpoints of a good release point, Hand, you know, arm out, fingers on top of and behind the baseball. And you can do this drill one or two ways. You can either rock and pull down and do that against a chair, table, anything like that, uh, bucket, etc. You can either just reach out into that release point, rock and pull straight down. Or if you want to challenge yourself and go a little bit further, you can even take it, take it as if you're off the ground already, put this out front and pull down. Now one of the reasons I like this particular drill when you're off the ground with your back leg is it makes you get even more feedback if you're someone who's pulling across, really pulling side to side. When you're doing that last drill uh, on, on your release point pull downs with a towel drill, it'll give you even more feedback to notice if it's pulling you and yanking you off to the side. Um, that's not quite it. Uh, it's a good place on one hand to stop on the other. I want to break into just a couple other things that I would mention. Uh, when you're doing these particular drills, we, we think about wrist activation and then where to go from here. I just want to talk real quick about that because I see tons of kids and I'm a big fan of, I'm not necessarily big into this, although I do think it's a good training tool. Um, I think once you've got the technique and what you're trying to accomplish down out of it, I really, really like these facing loads where your feet are, some people say feet in concrete. I really just like this here. And I'll start off here. When I throw, I start off right here, do a handful of these just to remind myself, get into that, uh, that wrist activation. But the next thing that I see is, I see kids especially, I see them do this, either whether it be wrist, wrist and elbow, and then they just go back to their normal mechanics and they forget about this wrist activation. So one of the steps that I like to do is, I like to say then, okay, we're going from, uh, we're doing these drills into handbrake and wrist flip. So handbrake, wrist flip, handbrake, wrist flip. These are some other drills that uh, I recommend as the next sequence. In fact, that one right there is quite possibly one of my favorite, if not the favorite, pitching and throwing practice position of any that I can possibly think of. Uh, the sideways loads are really good. The, you know, people call them rockers when you're, when you're uh, doing these. And this is, you know, this is another really good one uh, where you're getting some practice in there. But these, this facing load, good athletic position. To me, this is like a pitcher's free throw. We can sit here and do this pretty much all day and work on a lot of our mechanics and take a look at a lot of things, especially good for taking off the lower half emphasizing the upper half. But again, the point of my story here was don't forget about wrist flip and then bring it into your throw. Bring it into your throw. Don't just wrist flip and then forget about it. Wrist flip, bring it into your mechanics. Um, I think that's about it. Um, oh, I, I take that back. Here's a little bonus one for the, for the folks. Uh, just a real simple stay at home drill. You see guys throwing the ball in their glove. One of the things that most position players need to get in the habit of doing is when they put a ball in their glove, when they reach in for a transfer, whether it be an outfielder uh, on a crow hop transfer, infielder is fielding the ball out front. If we can get that four seam grip, it's gonna give us more accuracy on each of our throws. And one of the things, other thing, I didn't know this was a drill, I used to just do this when I was a kid, throw the ball in the glove and either reach in and get it, or hey, if you're thinking about you're being a slick middle infielder and you're gonna toss it right back out, once you get that ball in your hand, 
you should start to naturally be able to transition that ball to a four seam. Uh, think of it like a Rubik's Cube, a puzzle. Anywhere you put the hand on the baseball, there's going to be a fastest and most comfortable way for you to transfer to a four seam grip. There's going to be, a, I don't even know, millions of different variations. But if you just start playing around with even just catching the ball and then getting it into a four seam grip, this is going to help you with, uh, with doing it without even thinking so that you can get the most accurate throws possible across the diamond or from the outfield into your cutoff home or even throwing all the way home. I hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, just keep thinking about baseball. Always ways to get better. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave some comments down below if there's other things you want to learn about. See you later, guys. Hey, almost forgot uh, one of the drills that uh, the whole reason I came back here to the back porch to begin with uh, was to just emphasize that there's other drills and other things that you can do. Uh, Harold Reynolds uh, put out a great video for some infield drills uh, you can do in a, in a garage, in a basement, outside, in a driveway finding a, a, an empty wall that you can use. Uh, I will try to find the link to that, but that was just put out recently. And there's so many things you can do. I'm not reinventing the wheel. Uh, just trying to get out some of this information out to you guys who are uh, avid baseball enthusiasts and want to keep learning and keep improving. Uh, one of the other things, uh, like I said, the reason we've got this wall is think about that rotation. And if you want to take a tennis ball and put a line on it, you can do that. Uh, if you have a, a concrete wall, you can use an actual baseball. Feel free to uh, just use a tennis ball and again i like to get into this facing load position and then think about these wrist flips you can just start here you can uh, do the wrist flips uh, and then you can even just go from the wrist flips into out front and do it nice and easy now i'm super close right now just so that i can keep it here on camera but ultimately the drill is going to be the same you're going to focus on everything that we just talked about put it into practice and then give yourself something uh, something a little bit different, fun, unique, dynamic in order to get the practice in. Uh, if you're an infielder, you can um, add in the uh, additional parts of th throwing the ball and then fielding it properly, pick and, pick and pull, all those things, and then working on that, uh, pulling the ball out and getting the grip that you want. So anyways, uh, almost forgot about that. Wanted to make sure I included in this edition. See you around for next time.